Welcome back. This is Elisa Ruffin with Leading Educators again. And remember, you are on the Grade 11 ELA Unit 6 videos. We are on Week 2, Lesson 9. You all have done a great amount of work this week over the past few lessons. We're going to take a look at all that you've accomplished this week and what's ahead for today. So, so far this week, you have done some really intense reading. Uh, you've done some historical background reading. You have done at least a first read and a close read of the text everyday use. And today we're going to move on to analyzing the text and all of those annotations, all the work and thinking that you've done surrounding this text so far are going to come in handy as we evaluate this text at a much deeper level. Before we jump into that, though, just a reminder, you should be sharing your learning with others when you're done with the lesson activities for today, and that you should be completing a fluency activity and doing 20 additional minutes of reading with a text of your choice. So don't forget that really important thing. And now we've arrived to our last riddle of the day for the week. This one is a simple one-liner kind of like the one a couple of days ago, but still thought provoking. So I hope that you're ready. And I hope that my intro has given enough time for everyone to gather, 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 and for you to prepare. So today's riddle, last one in this series of lessons. What can't talk, but will reply when spoken to? What can't talk, but will reply when spoken to? Much like yesterday, you probably have some preliminary ideas, but do you have the idea? Pause the video for a minute if you need it. Resist the urge to find out from another source and think a bit. The answer to the riddle today is an echo, right? Clever, another one, right? It doesn't say that the reply would be something unique. It just says there's a reply. And if you've ever done an echo, you know that as soon as you talk, there's going to be a response. All right, resources and materials for today. You're going to need everyday use, your learning packet with the lesson nine overview and note catcher, a pen or pencil, and a smartphone or device is optional if you'd like to access the text digitally. Again, we're doing our protocols of read, think, talk, write, close today. Your learning targets have you evaluating the character's opinions and actions and feelings. So not just observing or responding, but really taking a critical look at those actions and appearances. The other learning target, I can connect the overall plot and theme of the story to the essential question and the theme of the unit. So now we're talking big picture pieces here. You've pulled apart the theme from yesterday's activity, and, and that should be a, a really good uh, starting point for you as you think through those things. And then your talk point for today should really generate some discussion as well. Should heirlooms be used every day? Why or why not? So we started all of these units talking about, um, in some of the lesson activities, all of these lessons, I should say, talking about heirlooms what they are, whether or not you have anything in your current possession that will become an heirloom, why is an heirloom an heirloom, and now we're moving on to should they be used for everyday use. This is a point that was brought up in our text yesterday um, as Wanjiro and Mama had this conversation about quilts. You're also going to be doing some thinking here, but instead of the annotating protocols, you'll be thinking about specific questions, and we'll get to those a little bit later, and I'll unpack exactly how to think through those things. And you're going to record the talk information, the think information, um, as well as the writing information in various sections of your note catcher today. The essential question comes into the forefront of your thinking today. What do stories reveal about the human condition? You're actually going to connect this with the reading and thinking you've been doing so far. So it's really important to clarify that. And also, again, what factors lead a person to accept, reject, or feel neutral about their heritage? Those things are going to come up in your analysis. So as we do with our analysis uh, portions of the reads for any text, Instead of going through an annotating, which we've already done the heavy lifting of the annotating, 
Now we're going to pull apart what the questions are asking of us and resourcing the text and the annotations we've already made to respond. So I'm going to model how to do that for you. So we're going to look at the think section more closely here. And there are two questions in that section. What do the quilts symbolize or represent? And what does D, aka Wanjiro, plan to do with the items that she requests? So as you've read the story now several times, you know that she requests more than quilts. There are several things in Mama's house that she identifies that she wants and starts talking about where she's going to place them and how she's going to use them. So keep that in mind. Some of the uh, key ideas that you need to look at when you are unpacking these questions is first, the key term here is symbolize. What do the quilts represent? So it's not just about the quilts themselves. It's what does the quilt me mean in the context of the story? What does the quilt mean to the character? So we'll start there today. Okay, and we can get clues about what that means by going back to our annotations and looking at some of the thoughts and expressions and dialogue that characters are having. And then also, if you look at question number two, that can give you an idea as well, because it's going to uh, get at, okay, based on Wanjiro's plans, that should give you a little bit of idea of what these quilts represent to her. Okay, so I need to be thinking about what quilts are in the stories. What are they made of? Who are they? Who were they made by? How were they made? All of that information is there for you. Looking back at the text and our annotations will get us there. The second part that you have to do today is looking at in what ways do the quilts hold different meanings for Wanjiro, Maggie, and Mama? All three of them have different perspectives. You're going to use the chart below to compare and contrast their perspectives on the actual quilt. So the quilt is the focus. How do these three characters differ in the way in which they view these quilts? And so this is another step for, again, how to really analyze what's going on in the text here. And it's going to set you up as we move forward and do some additional things um, in our work with everyday use. So now it's your turn. So you're going to talk about should heirlooms be used every day? Why or why not? You are going to record uh, your responses there as you have this conversation with a family member, caregiver, or friend. You are going to think through the two questions that we just uh, modeled and go back to your text and annotations to help you do so. And then you're going to compare and contrast these three characters and their perspectives on quilts, the quilt specifically in the story there. So see if you can uh, figure out some things uh, as you examine their perspectives on quilts. It'll help you know more and more about their personalities as characters in the story. And then finally, in the closing activity, you're going to think about a personal item that you own that may seem ordinary. And you've already been thinking about this as we've talked about heirlooms a couple lessons ago, um, that people may not necessarily see as having great value. But for you, it, it's up there. It could be an heirloom. Why might other people not understand the value of the object? Why might they not get how valuable it is to you and what it means to you specifically? I want you to think about that. And after you complete this particular thought, I want you to have that conversation with someone else and record some of your thoughts um, in that section of your note catcher. And then make sure that you move on to uh, doing those extra activities. Again, if you have any questions, as always, you can email a teacher for support, pause and replay this video, and take it step by step as much as you need so that you can make sure that you answer those questions uh, deeply and fully. Again, once you're done with that, you're going to make sure that you are sharing your learning, that you're completing the fluency activity, and that you're doing that additional 20 minutes of reading. So we have come to the end of another series of lessons. You have worked hard every single day, and I have full faith and confidence that you can push out this last lesson here. And uh, that you are going to be prepared for next week as we do even more work with this particular text. There's so much more to talk about uh, and you, you're going to get to see that next week. So once you're done, do those additional activities and then give your brain a much needed break. You've earned it. See you next time.